Hey, buckaroos and buckarettes, it's good to be back with you. This is another in a series of videos about statics, and today I'd like to talk to you about the method of sections. If you're analyzing trusses like this one, pin jointed trusses, there's basically two ways to go. One is the method of joints, which is kind of a funny name, but there it is. And I've already done a video on that, maybe more than one, I can't remember. And the other one's called the method of sections, which is what we're going to do today. Now before we get started, why would you choose the method of joints or the method of sections? Well, method of joints, you solve for forces at all the individual pin joints. And so if you want to know what's going on inside the structure somewhere, you've got to start at one end or the other, one uh, uh, of the supports or another, and work all the way through until you finally get to the one you want. Now that can be kind of a problem. Another way to do it is to simply put what's called a fictitious cut. It isn't really a cut, but we're going to draw a line in there and look at the forces across that line. That's the method of sections. And the advantage of it is you can draw that line wherever you want, and you really only wind up solving for the numbers you actually need. So it's a more compact way to do it, particularly if you've got a very complicated truss. Now, we needed a uh, truss to work with, so I drew this one. This matches one I used it as, as an example in my class here at Purdue. And I've got uh, supports there, simply supported at 1 and 6. Now, in red, I've just numbered all the grid points. Now, these basically cells, these boxes that this truss is made out of, are all 5 meters on a side. I'm probably going to erase that here in a minute just for compactness. But just so you know, each of these little cells here, there looks like there's one, two, three, four cells. Those are square and those are five meters on a side. Conveniently, all our angles are either going to be uh, 0, 45, or 90 degrees. So good for an example. Now, where would we want to know the forces? Well, let's, let's take this. Let's make this line right here the one we care about. Okay, that's a fictitious cut. It isn't really there. We're not really getting a big saw and sawing our structure into. We're just drawing a line across there, and we're going to draw one section of the truss uh, that uh, go, it's cut at that line, and we're going to look at the forces of the elements that cross that line. That's the method of sections. So let's go over the steps for the method of sections, and they are We're going to find the necessary reaction forces. Now, because of the way this is, is set up, I don't necessarily need both of them. Um, I probably only need the reaction force on the part of the structure that I'm retaining. So since the cut is right there, I'm going to retain this side. I don't care what that reaction force is. Next thing we're going to do is draw a free body diagram. I'm going to head out of your way here in a second. A free body diagram of the section of interest. Draw a free body diagram of only the part we care about, not the whole structure, just the part we care about. So in this case, it'll be just right over here. All right, step three. Step three is we're going to write out the equations of static equilibrium. That's just a 50 cent expression for saying some of the forces in the x direction equal zero, some of the forces in the y direction equal zero, and the sum of the moments in plane is also zero. Now this works just as well in 3D as it does in 2D, but we're going to stick with 2D right now. That's, that's, we've got plenty of work on our hands as it is. So number four, solve for unknown forces. Solve for some, what it, whatever it is you don't know. In our case, we're going to solve for the forces that are the, in the elements that cross our fictitious cut. Five, this is a, I tell my students, enjoy baked goods. You can enjoy baked goods when you're done. This is uh, optional. So, with our recipe written out, let's get started. Now, I'm going to erase this because I need the room to work. We're going to start with net, finding the necessary reaction forces. So, let's do that. This isn't really a free body diagram. This is a working diagram. There's no forces on it, and it's not free. It hasn't been cut loose from its supports. So let's fix the drawing. Let's turn this into a free body diagram. Okay. 
Okay, here's our free body diagram now. We've got the entire structure here. We've replaced the supports with the inner the reaction forces. We're going to solve for this one. We're not going to solve for those. We don't need those, so I'm just calling them fx, x, y. I'm going to find reaction forces using the exact same recipe I use for any other structure. Start with a free body diagram. So I'm going to find the reaction forces exactly like you'd think, using the exact same process, the exact same recipe you use for any other structural problem. We, have, we had the working diagram. We turned it into a free body diagram. Write out the equations of equilibrium. In, so some of the forces in the x direction equal zero. Some of the forces in the y direction equal zero. And some of the moments in the xy plane also equal zero. So you get three uh, equations. You can solve for three unknowns. Now the nice part is that I only need one unknown. I only need this one. I don't need those two. So if I sum the forces or sum the moments right at that point, at point six, set those equal to zero, I can solve for FR directly, and it turns out to be 66,666.7. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Newtons. All right. So work through it, and you should get that number. So. I've got everything I need to analyze this segment over here. Let's cut this loose now. Let's, let's remove this part of the structure because I don't need it anymore. The information from that 100,000 newtons is actually contained over there. I needed to know that number to write down that number. Now that I've got this, the rest of the structure doesn't matter anymore, so I'm going to erase it. So what I'm going to do is right where I've cut the structure, I'm going to replace the effect of all that stuff I cut off with the three forces in those elements. Because remember, that's the only way those elements can talk to the rest of the structure is through the forces there. So let's draw those. And the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to write a number F or a letter F, and I'm going to have a subscript that's the two points that it connected. So this will be F23, just so you know. So let's draw those right now. Okay, there you are. Of course, I've got my, my worked out problem here. Um, I don't know how good you think my memory is, but if you think I can do this from memory, sorry guys. So, I've got my cheat sheet here. F23 is the force in the element between grid points 2 and 3. F38 is the force in the element between grid points 3 and 8. And F78 is the force in the element between grid points 7 and 8. Now, the directions, I just guessed. I have no idea what those really are, at least I didn't before I solved the problem. So what I did is I just assumed some directions. That's all you can do. If you are too upset about, you can't just intuit that answer, something's wrong. This is not for intuition, this is for calculation. So um, I just took some guesses at the numbers they seem, or the directions, they seem reasonable. Now what if my directions are wrong? Well, if I assumed incorrectly, the force will be will have a negative number on the front of it. That's all it is. So there's nothing wrong. It's just the mathematics way of saying, oh, well, you happen to assume the, the uh, wrong direction, but because there's a minus sign on it, you'll get the correct answer anyway. So this is it. There's no, the rest of the structure doesn't exist anymore. You don't have to worry about it anymore. We've accounted for its effect in two ways. One is right here, and the other one is those three forces we're about to find. So let's do what we always do in this situation. And let's write some of the forces in the x direction equals zero. Now, how am I going to do this? Well, let me, those are already in the x direction. Let me do this. I've got some other colors here. Let me, uh, let's see, how about purple? Purple's a good color. Why? Now, I know this is a fairly cumbersome notational scheme here. I know that I haven't, I don't see this very often. In fact, this may be unique. But it's not hard to tell what you're looking at now. By looking at that, I can tell that I'm looking at the forces in the element that go between grid point 3 and grid point 8, and I'm looking in the component in the x direction. All right, that's unambiguous, and there's something to be said for that. I use this in class. I don't know that I've ever seen this in a textbook, but this does seem to work, so I'm going to stick with it. So let's see. Oh. Can I go anywhere without a coordinate system? No, I can't. So let's draw the positive sign convention here. 
and we use that as the positive sign convention. If you don't know what else to do, use that. That'll work. So let's see. Um, minus F23. Okay, so I got that. Plus F38X and plus F78. Well, let's see here. I'm going to call that angle theta. And the nice part about this is theta is the same everywhere for this particular truss. So I, what I can really do here is I can say minus F23 plus F38, and that's going to be cosine theta equals zero. Okay, there. Okay, so I've got this now. There's equation number one. Equation number two is some of the forces in the y direction now. So it's going to be FR, because that's positive. And now this one actually I've drawn positive. Now F38Y is going to be F38 sine theta, so let's do that. Well, they can't both be positive. Something's got to be negative. So clearly I drew, drew that arrow in the wrong direction. That's okay. Now, some of the forces, I'm sorry, some of the moments has to also equal zero, but some of the moments about what point. I can pick any point on here I want. I can pick down here if I want to. Well, what would you do? Well, if I pick right there, some of the moments around point 8, well, those, the, the, the uh, contributions between 3, 8, and 7, 8 go to zero because the moment arm is zero. I'm left with this one, which I know, and this one, which I'm trying to find. So F, uh, point 8 is a pretty good point about which to uh, uh, sum the moments. So let's do that. I'll just put the moments about point 0.8 there. All righty, and remember, each of these cells is 5 meters. So let's see. That's co counterclockwise is positive. So about that point, FR is going to give me a negative moment. So negative 5 meters times FR. This one's going to give me a positive moment about that point, so plus 5 meters times F23, and that all has to equal 0. So there's that. That's pretty good. So I got 1, 2, 3 equations. How many unknowns do I have? Let's see. Let's draw a little red underline under each of the, the unknowns, uh, each of the variables I don't know. So let's see, I don't know 2, 3, I don't know 3, 8, and I don't know F7. Well, there it is again, and there it is again. So I've got, there's only three things I don't know. Well, I've got three equations. Three equations, three unknowns, I'm, in good, I'm good to go. Okay, this has been a pretty long video up till now. Let's just review where we are. We've identified three unknowns, and we've got three equations. There's one of them. There's the second one, and there's the third one right there. And this one is particularly easy to solve. So let's just pause for a moment, and I'll write down the answers for you. So there you are. And I've written these out to six significant figures. If you need fewer than that, you'll have to round off. The important part here is that minus sign right there. Remember this? I told you I thought that might be the wrong direction, but I wasn't sure initially. Well, there's the math telling me that that was the wrong direction. The important part to take away from it is not that this is wrong. It isn't. It's fine. It's that you don't need to know what the right direction assume is. Just assume one and go. If you execute the process correctly, the math will take care of you. What that means is you don't need intuition. You don't need to correctly guess the, no the direction of the force here. Doesn't matter. There. Takes care of it for you. So, there it is, the process, in some detail. So if you execute the process correctly, you're going to get the right answer. Hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.